One of the first plyometric exercises we use is using the shuttle machine. We use this machine for a variety of different exercises throughout the phases. The nice thing about the shuttle is we can control the amount of resistance going through the leg. Um, it's got elastic cords with varying resistance. We usually start out pretty light and then work our way up towards um, more towards body weight. Um, the other nice thing is go ahead and lay down. Is I can control her knee angle. So that 60 degree angle that's so key, we can control. She's at about 90 degrees here. So I'm gonna adjust this, have her scoot back a little bit to where we can teach her to land in that magic, you know, 60 degree angle where you get the most co-contraction between the quadriceps and the hamstrings. So the first exercise we'll do is just a bilateral jump. Throughout the phase phases, um, the semantics of the words I'm gonna use, jump means a two leg and a hop means a one legged jump. So. Um, when I say jump, it's going to be a bilateral jump. A uh, unilateral jump will actually be called a hop. So go ahead and push through your feet. And she's going to land nice and soft, toe to heel landing, decreasing the time that her feet are on the platform. And we usually have our patients start with a set of 20. And the whole time I'm watching her joint alignment, a lot of times what we'll see with patients is they're going to favor their surgical leg. And her alignment looks good, so we're looking for her knee to stay over the toes. After she has completed this exercise, we usually have her rest anywhere from 30 seconds to a minute in between sets, and we usually do around three sets of 20 in this early level phase. The next progression on the shuttle machine we do is alternating between the left and right feet. The setup's going to be the same, so we're looking for the 60 degree angle at the knees. What she's going to do, she's going to push off her left leg and land on the right leg. Same joint mechanics, leaning toe to heel, keeping her alignment good and sound. So go ahead. So the whole time we're watching her alignment, making sure she's not getting that dyna dynamic valgus or knock knee position. Another thing we can assess is limb dominance. This is a good exercise to train uh, people to get comfortable loading and unloading their surgical leg. And we utilize the same rest breaks on this exercise. So 30 seconds to a minute based off of how many repetitions she does. This is all kind of at the discretion of the clinician. One of the most important exercises throughout the protocol and it is repeated throughout the protocol with different variations is what we call lateral bounding in place. Um, what we're going to have Katie do is get into uh, that good athletic position, butt back, a little wider on the feet. And what we're going to have her do is almost like a weight shift. She's going to land in this flex knee position, shifting her weight from right to left. This is the first body weight exercise we do in the coronal plane. Um, it's similar to cutting, and as we progress throughout the program, we're going to get more aggressive and add a few um, tweaks to, the, to this exercise. So what she's going to do, she's going to shift her weight to the right, load and unload load and unload. So at first we want her just getting confidence in that leg and that surgical knee. And as she progresses we're going to have her go quicker, decreasing the amortization phase or when her foot's on the ground. And obviously work more for more explosion and power. Early on though we just want to go nice and slow with this, making sure they keep good sound joint mechanics like she's doing. And the 20 to 30 second bout is usually what we start with. So this is lateral bounding in place. We start this entry level exercise in the first phase. The next exercise we do early on in the impact uh, protocol is we start to utilize the slide board. Um, we do this for a couple of reasons. This one's very similar to lateral bounding in place which we already went over. Um, what we're encouraging her to do is to drive and push off both our surgical and non-surgical leg. How this is different than lateral bounding in place is challenges the balance and the proprioception just a little bit more. So what I'll have her do is get in that good athletic position, that squat position, push and drive off her right leg, sliding over to the left and repeating that back and forth. There's also a little more aerobic involvement with this exercise. Once again, we do this for time, usually starting anywhere from 20 to 30 seconds. And usually we have them do about two to three sets. So she's driving, getting low on that knee, pushing. 
is good. It's real hard to favor your surgical leg and do this correctly. Another reason I like this exercise. So the whole time we're gonna monitor both her mechanics and any signs of joint distress. At any point she experiences pain or has any symptoms at all, then we're gonna discontinue the exercise and either modify it or not do it for the day. Good. And that is the slide board exercise. In the first phase, we begin jogging in place. This is the first full body weight exercise we do. We just do this to get confidence in the knee, to assess their alignment, make sure they're loading the joint correctly, evenly. Usually have them do this for 20 to 30 seconds. Then we will progress this to high knees. So she's going to bring her legs up nice and high. We stress letting her hips control where her knees are in space. A little more impact into the joint. 20 to 30 seconds. Once again, just watching for any abnormal signs of joint stress. Then we move this into gluteal kicks. This gets the hamstrings involved. As we've talked, the hamstrings are very, very key at stabilizing the knee and protecting that new ACL. And she's run through that for 30 seconds. We go right back to jogging in place. Back to high knees. And then lastly, into the gluteal kicks. We usually run through those twice, each one 30 seconds at a time.